The story centers around a virtuous man, Naboth, who had a beautiful vineyard that was close to the palace of Ahab. Ahab desired the vineyard, and when he asked Naboth for it, Naboth refused it to him, saying that it was an ancestral inheritance, meaning it had been passed down as a family inheritance for many generations. When Jezebel heard this, she concocted the following plan in order to seize the vineyard for her husband. She composed the letter that was engraved with the seal of the king and which commanded a special fast day be proclaimed. On that day, Naboth was to be seated in a prominent place amongst the people where he could be seen by all. Jezebel ordered that two false witnesses should appear at that moment and proclaim before all that they had heard Naboth blaspheming both God and the name of the king. Of course, each of these charges entailed the death sentence through stoning. The day arrived, all went according to Jezebel's plan, and Naboth was stoned to death. Jezebel then orders Ahab to go and seize the vineyard, which he does. Afterwards, the Lord commands Elijah to visit Ahab in the vineyard. He orders him to tell Ahab, this is what the Lord says, have you not murdered a man and seized his property? Then say to him, this is what the Lord says, in the place where dogs licked up Naboth's blood, dogs will lick up your blood, yes, yours. When Ahab sees Elijah, he says, so you have found me, my enemy. To this the prophet replies, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. He says, I am going to bring disaster on you. I will wipe out your descendants and cut off from Ahab every last meal in Israel, slave or free. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and that of Baasha, son of Aiha, because you have aroused my anger and have caused Israel to sin. And also concerning Jezebel, the Lord says, dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Dogs will eat those belonging to Ahab who die in the city, and the birds will feed on those who die in the country. When Ahab hears all this, he grieves inconsolably and wears sackcloth. The Lord, seeing him humble himself before God to such a degree, tells Elijah that he will not bring destruction to the house of Ahab during his lifetime, but rather during the time of his son. In the next chapter, Ahab dies in battle, and Ahaziah succeeds him as king of Israel. Thank you, Professor. Thank Wonderful you. lecture. Um, I was wondering why the destruction of Ahab was transferred to his son instead of just being forgiven entirely uh -huh. in contrast to other times in scripture uh, like Nineveh who <coughs> took on ash and sackcloth mm -hmm. and it was forgiven entirely to them. Yes. Okay, thank you for that question, John. Um, in scripture, there's a phrase that refers to God as theos metanon, a repenting or a repentant God. Now, when we think of the word repentance, of course, we think in our terms, when a human being who's sinful repents, that means they, they change their way of thinking. The actual word metania means changing, the, the, to change one's thought, right? That's what it actually means to repent. Uh, so God, of course, God is sinless, God is perfect, but it, it, Scripture describes them as a, a, a theos, um, a God who repents, meaning a God who changes his mind, when he sees genuine repentance from his creation. And I'm glad you actually uh, paired up the idea because Ahab, when he heard the verdict <clears throat> pronounced against him, he didn't expect it. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit. When you read the prophet Elijah in the books uh, in Third and Fourth Kingdoms, you will see there's more details to the Naboth story, right, the vineyard story, that I didn't go into in detail. Ahab was in the dark. He didn't know what that wife of his was preparing in the background. He, she just said, I will get the vineyard for you, and he consented. But he didn't think it would lead to the death of Naboth, because he himself had never thought it, first thing. Second, it's for something he did not per se do, but was still um, a participant in indirectly, he lamented because he didn't know his desire for the vineyard would cause the true God of Israel, who at this point he's ascertained who he is and what his power is. He did not ever think that the God of Israel would, would send him a horrible death. So because he wore sackcloth, sackcloth, I can't even envision what sackcloth in ancient days was, but it must have been a very uncomfortable, a very dirty material because it was to, to humble yourself extremely. Uh, it doesn't say fasting, but it says he wore sackcloth and, and, and cried, lamented for his sin. And so God, 
accepts the repentance of all. We see it again in Manasi. Manasi had worshipped false deities. And when he was carried off uh, by the Assyrians, or Babylonians, please pardon me, I'm mixing up narratives. But when he's carried away to Babylon and he's in prison, at there he reaches such a depth of despair that he laments and God forgives him and out of him comes the beautiful prayer that we have in read during Great Compline that's still preserved in the church. So God uses these figures as an example. So because of the repentance he had, God delayed the punishment. The same thing happened with the prophet Solomon. Remember the prophet Solomon had done many iniquities and also worshipped Asherahs and foreign deities but because for the sake of his father David he says I will not touch you your kingdom will stay unified as long as you are uh, alive mm. but when his sons take over right after his death the kingdom splits mm. right and Nineveh the chief example of all this Nineveh was to be destroyed but after the preaching where they fast from food and water li all living creatures for three days it says God repents of his action meaning God changes in mind and spares them. The second time that Nineveh is warned, though, and they do not repent, we remember what happens from Old Testament class. They are annihilated. God's wrath does destroy Nineveh. So all that to say, it was God's love and compassion towards His creation that He accepted the repentance of Ahab and allowed him to, to not die the grisly death prophesied of him.